be unto you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Before we get going too far, let's go ahead and pray the prayer that we see it on the screen. Will you pray with me? Come, Holy Spirit, fill our hearts with your faith. the outline, the other side is uh, the, the list of those who are involved. And I invite you to take us home and pray for those folks who are leading our uh, Christian education, uh, both for children and for adults. And um, just to also say to you, too, that uh, two weeks from today, the adult Sunday school starts. And so we invite you to uh, participate in that. Come at 9.30. It meets over in the conference room, just beside the office. And uh, it's a good uh, Sunday school class, and, and you can be part of that, and then come over to church uh, at the 11 o'clock service. Today, though, I want to uh, particularly focus in on uh, the scripture that's at the top of your outline. It's from Paul's letter to the Philippians, the first uh, uh, chapter, verses 4 through 6. Paul writes, In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Partnerships in life are critically important. Someone once wrote, no man is an island. And uh, what that really means is that we are really better when, uh, uh, when we're not alone. Somebody coined the phrase as well, too, better together. And I believe that that's true in the church and true in the world. And uh, that we are less when we, when we think that we're all by ourselves. And uh, God certainly never intended that for us to be Christians all alone. Uh, there's no such thing as Christian home rangers. And, and so uh, God has invited us to be in partnership. And I, and I rejoice uh, in the partnerships that I've had in my life, and I've been very blessed with friends in our work. Uh, uh, and uh, I, I think back to when I was a young pastor, and I, I got, came right out of seminary and went to uh, Advent Lutheran Church in Boca Raton. And I'll, to be honest, I was mentored uh, for all that time, honestly, by a uh, fellow who was senior pastor for many years, and then I ended up becoming senior pastor. And uh, the memory of Ron Dingle meant a lot to me. My, my wife and I often talk about our marriage as being a partnership. And that's true, not just in paying bills, but it's true in, in uh, uh, when we get the yard done, oftentimes she'll say, hey, high five, you know, because uh, we, we share in those responsibilities. She enjoys mowing the lawn. Did I marry a great woman or what? <laughs> yeah, you know? Uh, and uh, she actually enjoys it, so uh, praise God. Uh, <laughs> That's for sure. But uh, so, so we, we talk about partnership in our marriage and so forth. And, and uh, uh, partnerships are important for growth to happen. And I hope that you see in your life people who are partners with you in various ways. Perhaps it's in, uh, being in physical, it's being uh, growing a, a sense of uh, physical fitness and so forth. But, to, to help improve. You know, if you go to a, a, a therapist and so forth, they're a partner with you to, to get you better. Uh, I think about going to the gym. I have people that, that uh, I consider to be partners as I, as I go to the gym regularly and so forth. Or, or partners uh, uh, can also be emotional. People that we can go to when we have challenges and when we have joys as well. Or it can be also uh, mental partners, teachers, our partners and so forth with their students. Spiritually, I pray that your pastor is a partner with you and that other uh, fellow believers are also partners with you as well too. And, and that's critically important. In uh, Paul's letter to Timothy, in his second letter, he in chapter 3, he writes it this way. Listen, listen to this. You, however, know all about my teaching. He's writing to Timothy. My way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, 
persecutions, sufferings. What kind of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra? The persecutions I endured. Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. While evildoers and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you've learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness so that all God's people may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. One of the things that, that Paul says there is that the scripture is God-breathed. What does that mean? Well, just as God breathed into Adam and Eve at their creation, uh, the, the breath of life, he breathes into his word. This is not a book that is just uh, several thousands of years old and it only pertains to those several thousands of years. No, it is alive and well and speaks in my life, to my life, and to your life regularly. That's why we encourage all of us as disciples of Jesus Christ to read the Bible daily, to allow God to speak to my heart and mind and to yours through this book. That the words are not just words of history, but words that pertain to my life and to your life today. You see, because the fact of the matter is God wants to partner with you. And so the first partnership I want to talk about this morning is partnership with God. A partnership with God. With the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Look at what Paul writes to us in his letter, uh, first letter to the Corinthians, the third chapter. What, after all, is Apollos? And what is Paul? Only servants to whom you came to believe as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they'll each be rewarded according to their own labor. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. You see, God wants you to grow. And remember, as I often say, Ryder, if you aren't growing, you are dying. Absolutely. And so we've got to be growing people. We've got to be growing people. Earlier in the summer, the beginning of the summer, the end of the spring or so, the beginning of the summer, I'll be honest, I was a little down. I, uh, people were asking me, you know, so when are you going to retire and all this kind of thing? And, and quite frankly, I, I heard on the radio, I think they were talking about somebody, a sports figure, and they said, well, if you're talking about retirement, you're retired. <laughs> and I thought, the heck I am. <laughs> I don't want to be retired yet. And, 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 and so I was sort of wondering, well, Dave, what does the future hold for you? And so forth, and, and that kind of thing. And, 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 and if I'm honest, I was probably a little bit down. And so I said to the Lord, I said one morning as I was doing my devotion, Lord, I need your spirit to come and fill me in a new kind of way and, and help me know what my purpose is as I wrap things out up here at, at St. Andrew before we call another pastor. The rest we call another pastor. And, and I have sensed over the last several weeks that God is, is, is uh, renewing me in some ways. And I'm thankful for that. But that's not just because I'm a pastor. It's because I asked for it. And God wants to renew each and every one of us. And, and God wants to bless us with a greater sense of His, of his presence. Kathy and I, on, on uh, Friday afternoon, we played golf uh, late in the afternoon, about 4 o'clock or so. We only played nine holes. And, and as we were driving home, she said to me, because uh, it was the end of the first week of school, and she was tired. She admitted that. But she also said to me, she said, you know what, I'm as excited about this 35th year of teaching that she's beginning as she was in the first. And I thought, what a blessing. What a blessing. She was renewed in that way. And that's exciting, isn't it, huh? When we're renewed. And that's what God wants for all of his people. 
To give us a, a sense of purpose, a sense of direction in our lives is incredibly important. And uh, I praise God that that's true for Kathy. And, and I praise God for what is true for any of us. Because that's what he wants for us. You see, it's a partnership with him. And so that means that not only do we tell him what we want in the partnership, but we listen to him about what he wants in the partnership too. And, and that's so important. And so I invite you to, when you read God's word, to say, God, what is it you're trying to tell me? That's why we offer those portals of prayer. That's why we offer other devotions and so forth. And, and we invite you to use those to get into God's word and allow him to speak to your heart. And believe me, he will. If you invite him to do so, he will. He'll bring that into your, into your life. And so, at the end of each of these sections, I ask a question. Have you asked God for insight into His Word in your life? You know, maybe you're looking for something new in your life. Or maybe you're saying, you know what, I just want to carry on with what I'm doing, Lord. But to, to ask for His insight and His, His purpose in your life. So, it starts with a partnership with God. Secondly, it's a partnership with all God's children as well, too. Look what the writer of Hebrews says in Hebrews 10. Let us hold on swervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. You see, coming to church on a Sunday morning or during the week or something is important. Why? It's important for you because you put yourself in with people who can be an encouragement to you, but you also put yourself in a position to be an encouragement to someone else. You see, we're all tied together. It's not a, it's not a happenstance. It's not a mistake that you're here. Okay? God has called you here and wants to bless you. And wants to make you a blessing for us here. You see? And so God sees that we have a partnership with one another. And God's word is something that's very encouraging. One of the things that, that, that is true about God's word is it is always encouraging of us in life. To grow, to be healthy, to have healthy relationships and that kind of thing. And, and he wants that for you as much as he wants it for me. And, and he says, hey, I, I, I want that for you. You know, Jesus was open in that, that second text under that, under that heading from Mark 10, shows the little children. We spoke about that here in the last couple weeks. And, and uh, I, I want to ask you a question. Who, who in your life has been or is an encouragement to you today. Who has been an encouragement to you? Who is an encouragement to you? I, I, I want you to, to uh, take a moment and think about that. And then I, what I want you to do is to share that with somebody else right now. Okay? You can turn around the pew, you can turn to somebody and, and tell them about that, uh, about that person. Okay? All right, we're about those people, all right? Let's, let's take a moment to do that. So turn to somebody and, and think about that.
Yeah, that, that's an important question to consider periodically. And to thank God for that person, huh? How many of you, for how many of you were, was it your parents? Okay. So I'm good, good parents, okay. And uh, I know that my parents were, were one of those people that my youth pastor growing up was, the pastor I worked with for so many years was as well too. And if, if you haven't found those, that kind of person in your life, I want to really encourage you to do so. Because uh, they need to be an encouragement to you, and you need that as well. But also, you need to be an encouragement to somebody else. You, know, you need to be an encouragement to someone else. And, and, uh, and that leads us to the last part. The partnership, it's a partnership with parents, especially, or grandparents. Uh, I know that uh, here at the academy, when we, when we, at, uh, when last week we were discussing the ministry of the academy, uh, oftentimes we partner literally with uh, with parents. That's for sure, and oftentimes got uh, uh, grandparents as well too, and that's important. <coughs> and uh, I know that I'm thankful for, for my parents uh, for the way they raised me. I, I I pray that my children see that be a blessing in their lives, the way that, that their mom and I uh, parented them. And that we, in some regard, you know, once a parent, always a parent, right? So we still continue to do a lot of that and so forth. Um, and, uh, and that's okay. That, that's a wonderful blessing, isn't it? And, and God is inviting us to uh, be those kind of role models, not only for our children and our grandchildren, but for others around us as well, too. The other day I was listening to somebody speaking to a group of men and, and he, he brought out an interesting fact. Um, he said that uh, the percentage of people involved in pornography out of the community, in our communities, is the same percentage that are involved as are in our church. In other words, what they're saying is that Christian faith is not making a difference in Trying to fight pornography, for instance, and and you think about it, you know what our uh, cell phones, particularly smartphones and so forth, they're just little computers, aren't they, huh? And so uh, if a child has a smartphone, it's it's just as possible for them to to see that there, probably more likely than if they were going to see it at home on their laptop or their desktop. Right? And and because of that kind of stuff, I mean, and what was interesting is I, I've heard people say that, uh, you know, there's as many uh, websites with pornography as there are with religion. And uh, uh, that may very well be true. I tried to Google that to find out. Well, the first article I, I came up with, I wasn't going to pornography sites. I, no, I, I just Googled for what the facts were, okay? And, boy, some of you have minds that just go like that. And, and, and what was interesting, one of the first articles I came across was asking the question, which was worse, pornography sites or religious sites? And that made me really, uh, quite frankly, wonder. Because some people apparently don't think very highly of religion, if you will. And uh, I thought, wow, that wasn't what I expected. So, but what I, my point is this, is that as parents, as grandparents, it's, it's more difficult today than it was when many of us were growing up. And because all kinds of stuff is accessible to people in all kinds of means. And so, one of the things we need to do is we need to pray for parents, that's for sure, and for grandparents and so forth, who are, who are trying to do, uh, trying to bring a healthy, perspective into the children that they are uh, working with. And um, uh, we, need to, we need to pray for that, is what I'm going to say there. And, uh, you yeah, know, please don't go home and say, uh, you know, Pastor was looking at pornography <laughs> 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 It wasn't the truth, okay? It's not the truth. You know, but I, I asked the question, you know, who are you sharing God's word with today? St. Francis said it this way, preach the gospel at all times, 
and when necessary, use words. And when necessary, use words. We as Lutherans aren't necessarily the most vocal uh, people in a Christian church, typically, uh, about sharing the good news from the perspective of speaking from our perspective to somebody else. We're good at doing things and that kind of thing. But I believe that God is also challenging us not only to be doers of the word, but also speakers of the word, too. In other words, to say, you know what, God has really blessed me in this and that. To say that, you know what, hey, I, I found that God uh, brings a, a peace that I don't find anywhere else. To share that kind of, kind of uh, uh, perspective in your life is powerful to other people who don't know God, who don't know Jesus. And he wants us to do that. To say it to our children, to say it to our grandchildren, that God has blessed me. Is, is, is an important thing to be able to lift up, to be intentional in that regard. And uh, we thank and praise God for those who have shared that with us. And so today we, we recognize and celebrate the partnership that we have, first of all, with God, with all God's children, and that we have, especially with those who have the responsibility of raising up young ones to come and to help them to grow. All of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.